Right, Saxon course 2, lesson 38, is on interpreting graphs. So this one is a pictograph, and it wants us to answer the questions that follow the graph. So Adventure sold how many tires in March? Now on a pictograph, we of course have pictures, and then there's going to be a key at the bottom that shows what each of those pictures represents. So we know that one full tire represents 100 tires. Okay. So if I want to know how many more there were in March, I have one, two, three, four, five whole tires. So that's going to be five times 100. So that's 500 tires. And then I have half a tire. So half of 100 is 50. So they sold 550 tires in March. Okay. And then B asks how many, about how many tires were sold in the first three months of the year. So it wants to know how many there are total. So first I'm going to count up the whole tires. So there's four here. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 15 whole tires. So that's going to be 15 times 100, which is 15,000 or 1,500 plus that half a tire, which is 50. So 1,500 plus the 50 tires. There's going to be 1,550 tires were sold in the first three months. The second graph is a bar graph. Again, we need to use it to answer the questions. So A is about how many cans were collected by the students in room 14. So here's room 14. The column on the left shows me what it's measuring. So the number of aluminum cans. Okay, and then the bottom says is my room number. So, in room 14, we got up to 8,000 cans. So they gathered 8,000 cans from room 14. Okay. And in this next one, it says the students in room 16 collected about as many cans as what other two home rooms combined. So if we look at 16, they gathered, it looks to be about maybe 9,000 cans. So we need to figure out what two rooms combined to equal 9,000 cans. So we know that room 12 gathered about 45, or no, about 5,000 cans. Okay. And room 18 gathered about 4,000 cans. So 4,000 cans plus 5,000 cans is the 9,000 cans. So rooms, rooms, obviously can't spell, rooms 12 and 18 are the two rooms that when combined got as many cans as room 16. All right, and this next one, it's a line graph, and the line graph shows Paul's bowling scores for the last six games he played. So let's know what Paul's score was for game three. Again, on the left, it tells me the number of points scored, and the bottom tells me what I'm measuring, so the games. So for game three, okay, I'm going to look up at the dot, and he scored somewhere between 170 and 180 games. So he, And it looks like it's right in the middle, so he scored about 175 points for game three. Okay. The second question asks, in general, were Paul's scores improving or getting worse? So improvement means that your scores will be going up. If you're not improving, your scores will go down. So overall, there's only one place where his score went down, and that was game four. So overall, he, his scores are improving. So my answer would be he's improving. Okay. This next graph is a circle graph. And it wants us to figure out altogether how many hours are included in the graph. So the graph itself tells us how many hours we have. So we have 12 hours, 4 hours, and six, 8 hours. So there's a total of, for A, a total of 24 hours represented on this graph. Okay. The second question asks, what fraction of, the, of Alicia's day is spent in school? For this question, she spends 8 
of the 24 hours at school. So her fraction is going to be 8 over the 24 total hours, which we would reduce down to 1 third. Okay. All right, this next one, which of these two graphs is constructed in a misleading way? What feature in the graph makes it misleading? So if we look, both of them are bar graphs, and they both are showing the same information. But graph B is misleading because the lengths of the bars makes it appear that three, that three times as much rain fell in 2004 than in 2006. And, just by the, and the reason it does that is because we broke the vertical scale, which sometimes helps, but it distorts how tall these, these lines are. So you notice um, in 2003, this graph is much shorter than it is in graph A. So it makes it look like 2004 is much taller than it actually is in graph A. Okay. This next one, which of these two graphs is better to display Todd's height from age 10 to 14? So Todd's height gradually increased during these years which it's, just, it's displayed better in D. Okay. On graph C, it makes it appear that Todd's height didn't change until his age changed. Okay. So it looks like he didn't grow until he turned 11. So when he turned 11, boom, he suddenly gained a bunch of um, inches. When he turned 12, the day he turned 12, he suddenly grew. The day he thir turned 13, he suddenly grew again. And that's not how it works. On a line uh, on a line graph, we can show that he he grew in the months between each year. It's not just he suddenly grew at the beginning of each at, on each birthday. Okay, and that's it for this lesson.